Dr. Olivia Osborne is going for her daily run on the UCLA campus. She puts on her sports gear, which includes antimicrobial socks that contain silver nanoparticles. When Dr. Osborne washes her sports gear, the silver nanoparticles can be washed off and potentially enter the aquatic environment, for example, river systems. The potential exposure and unknown impact of these particles are what prompt this study. We were interested in the effects of silver nanoparticles on aquatic life. Therefore, we specifically chose the zebrafish, which is considered a highly versatile model organism. The motivation behind this work is the commercial relevance and the potential for environmental release. There are currently over 2,000 consumer products that contain nanoparticles. Of those, over 460 contain silver nanoparticles because of their antimicrobial properties. The consumer products in question are usually sports gear, cosmetics, and they range in a variety of uh, sectors but uh, usually um, they will get discarded into river systems due to their washing. As a result, we wanted to have a, an assessment on some of the aquatic organisms and specifically the fish. The major findings of our research are the fact that size matters. In this case, the smaller nanoparticles caused a very different toxicity outcome and more severe than the larger particles and in all the techniques we tested they had differential behaviour. When we carried out histopathology analysis on these target organs we saw for example in the gill that the structural damage was very different across all treatment groups. Specifically the differences between the particles. For the C20 we saw the secondary filaments fused together much more prominently than the C110 ones. For the intestines, we also saw this behavior where ultrastructural damage was very different across all treatment groups. Curious to know as to why we were seeing these histopathology differences, we adopted the silver staining method usually used in mammals which can help us determine where the silver is residing. We saw that for the gills, the particulate matter usually resided on the secondary filaments, as opposed to the silver nitrate which resided in the primary filaments. In the intestine, we observed that the 20 nanometer particles were residing in the basolateral membrane, as opposed to the 110 ones and the silver nitrate, which was on the apical surface of the membrane. These idealized diagrams illustrate what we believe is how the particles' demeanor act on the organs and as a result the bioavailability of the silver to the target organs. One of the techniques and approach that we implemented in this research, which was quite new to our field, uh, was the silver staining and uh, we adopted this from some previous research that was also done in our lab and was actually done on my slum. As a result, I wanted to then compare this technique and use it on the fish target organs and as a result we were able to see where the silver resides in both target organs, which is a nice novel finding. I think the major challenge in our field um, is the fact that we have to rely on modelling data to base our exposure concentrations because currently there's no data to actually suggest the real concentrations in the environment. So I think that is a major challenge for us and we have to base, as I said, our concentrations on modelling data. <laughs>